Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 21st of December. It is the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, and also it is the first day of winter. Today is the winter solstice, and I'll give you a little bit of more, little bit of more information in a moment on that. In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, excuse me, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is glorious in his saints, so come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The Lord is glorious in all his saints. O come, let us adore him. Psalm 102 Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto you. Hide not your face from me in the time of my trouble. Incline your ear to me when I call, O hear me, and very soon. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burnt up as in a furnace. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, my bones will scarcely cleave to my flesh. I become like an owl in the wilderness, like a screech owl among the ruins. I am solitary and lie sleepless because of my groaning. I am like a sparrow that sits alone upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all day long, and those who are engaged and raged against me conspire to do me hurt. For I have eaten ashes as if they were bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and wrath, for you have taken me up and cast me down. My days are gone like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, and your remembrance throughout all generations. Who shall rise? You shall rise and have mercy upon Zion, for it is time for you to have mercy upon her. Indeed, the time has come. For your servants love her very stones." and are moved to pity to see her in the dust. The nation shall fear your, your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your majesty, when the Lord shall build up Zion, and when his glory shall appear, when he turns to the prayer of the destitute, and despises not their plea. This shall be written of those that fear at, that come after, and people that shall yet be born shall praise the Lord. For he has looked down from his sanctuary. From the heavens the Lord has beheld the earth. 
that he might hear the groanings of those who are in captivity and deliver those who are condemned to die, that they may declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praises in Jerusalem, when the peoples are gathered together and the kingdoms also to serve the Lord. He brought down my, my, he brought down my strength before my time and shortened my days. But I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days, for your years endure throughout all generations. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. They shall wear out, as does a garment. And as a garment you shall change them, and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. The children of your servants shall continue, and their seed shall stand fast in your sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to St. John, beginning with the thirteenth chapter, the first verse. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard, its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. and to it the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth, uttering, haughty and blasphemous words. It was also allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all who dwell on earth will worship it, Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone, if anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with the sword, with the sword must he be slain. This is a call for endurance and faith of the saints. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it was allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast, and so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Also it caused all both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless it has the mark that is the name of the beast and or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred sixty six. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David, 
Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies and from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, beginning with the 14th chapter, the first verse. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And, and you know the way to, to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the whole church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You were seated at God's right hand in glory. You are, we believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Please join with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and in these days of preparation for the celebration of Christmas, may we also be prepared for Jesus to return as King of kings and Lord of lords to judge the living and the dead and to bring to finality your will for this world. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Thomas. You heard him mentioned um, by asking Jesus a question, Lord, how do we know where you're going? And Jesus says, you know, I am the way, the life, and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then he's very clear, if you want to see the Father, then you have to see me, Jesus. If you see Jesus, you see the Father. He's the one who introduces us to the Father, and he introduces us by saving us with his precious blood so that you and I are heirs, fellow heirs with him in the kingdom. I also mentioned today, oh, oh one other thing about St. Thomas, we also sometimes call him Doubting Thomas because he was absent at the first 
a resurrection appearance uh, to the apostles in the upper room. And after hearing the extraordinary story of Jesus appearing to them, he basically said, I want to see it with my own eyes. I want to touch and feel the wounds. And Jesus appeared the following week and said, Thomas, touch, see. And Thomas fell down and worshipped him and said, My Lord and my God. Now that's a tremendous proclamation. Thomas declares Jesus as God. And Jesus doesn't say, Oh no, you misunderstood. I'm just a representative. Oh no, you misunderstand. I'm not God. I'm just one of... Jesus accepts the worship. So never be deceived by those who would say, Well, Jesus never claimed to be God. That's a falsehood. Jesus often equated himself by his actions, by his teachings, as equal to God. It's very clear in the scriptures. And here's an example from Thomas, where Thomas exclaims to Jesus, falling down and worshiping him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus receives the worship. Something we dare not as humans do. But Jesus, as the second person of the Trinity, is entitled. This is Thomas. And we are thankful for his declaration of who Jesus really is. And we can relate to Thomas. We who have our doubts. We who wish to see. And of course, Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen, have not touched, but believe. And you and I are blessed in our belief. I also mentioned today is the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, consisting of nine hours and 56 minutes. And tomorrow, according to meteorologist Adam Clark, we start gaining time and we have two more seconds of daylight tomorrow. So there you are for the winter solstice, the beginning of winter right before our Christmas season and celebration of the birth of Christ and anticipate his return. Please join with me now after a sip of delicious coffee with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Ever-living God, you strengthened your apostle Thomas with firm and certain faith in your son's resurrection. Grant, O oh, so perfectly, without doubt, to believe in Jesus Christ our Lord and our God that our faith may never be found wanting in your sight, through him 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And as we are sorely hindered by our sins from running the race that is set before us, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now move into intercessions and thanksgivings, and if you don't mind, I will give you those topics, and after the topic, I will pray. I will, I will pause so that if that jars an, a, a, someone, that you, someone or something you would like to pray for, um, that, that would be an invitation to do so. And then we'll have some specific prayer requests, and then a pause for anything else that's on your heart and mind that I would not be interfering with, just simply would give a time of silence where anything but silence can occur. You could pray directly to God. And I want to thank you for your prayers as we, this week past weekend, Camille and I uh, went to Suffolk, Virginia and buried uh, with, with family, uh, my cousin Joyce, and I thank you for your prayers for safe travel and your condolences. Uh, they are much appreciated. And uh, so I thank you for that. And now, if we'll have these topical listings from the prayer book of uh, those items and people and things to pray for. I'll pause after each statement. Please pray for our nation, for healing, civic responsibility, peace, and courtesy. For the universal church and for the world especially for renewal and revival in the church and for peace. For all leaders and influencers, local, county, statewide, national, and international. For all bishops, priests, deacons, ministers, and Christians everywhere. For those who proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. For those who don't know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. For persecuted Christians around the world. For all facing trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. For all the faithful departed and their families, friends, and co-workers. For those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially remembering Glenn Kirkland, whose birthday is today. Please pray against the global COVID pandemic especially the most recent variants for those 
healthcare workers and all who stand in our defense and quite frankly in our protection and, and try to make us well uh, through their service in the medical field. And please pray against all storms and disasters, especially the 300 or more who died in the tsunami. Please pray for those who travel, especially as those will be traveling for the Christmas holiday. For members of our armed services, police, firefighters, first responders, the diplomatic corps, and their families. For those who work for peace and seek justice and righteousness. And I mentioned specifically, please pray for, Mar uh, for Nora and Shane, Ernie and Melissa, Christy, Nikki, Fred and Margie, Mary Lou and Rich, Joy and Jan, Glenn and Harriet, John and Galen, Natalie, Amy, and Jeff, Margie, Walter, Louise, Lynn, Kale, and Tori. We ask your prayers for discernment for the justices of the South Carolina Supreme Court in our recent hearing, and also for the repose of Bill Leslie. Bill Leslie was a mem was uh, active at uh, Holy Comforter, and his funeral is there today. And Bill was famous for handing out. Um, he's famous for lots of neat things, uh, but one thing is handing out um, little cards, and specific specifically dealing with um, with things that are happening amongst the planets and so forth. And so, but for his death. I guarantee you would have, we would have all received a card about the winter solstice today and that nine hours and 56 minutes. Uh, we uh, mourn the death of Bill and we thank God that he accepted Christ as his Savior and Lord. So he is a brother in Christ who we bury today but rejoice um, in, 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 that he's in the loving arms of Jesus, his Savior. And Lord. Let us continue now with silent prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. My friends, 
God bless you and see you tomorrow on Wednesday at noon for our Noonday Eucharist at Holy Cross. God bless you and until then, see you soon.